once read a quote which said, A flower does not think about competing with the flower next to it. It just simply blooms. At this point, you may begin to start comparing, which is a dangerous seed to let bloom in your mind. Remember that as long as you're trying, you can never lose. You either win or you learn. In my opinion, just by trying something new and getting out of your comfort zone is a winning move. For this tutorial, we will be focusing on peachy rose petals. And yes, I know these aren't roses, but they are all I could find on such short notice. So enjoy. For today's tutorial, you will need All right, let's jump into this. Start by mixing up a light wash of peachy orange, then proceed to paint all of your midtones and shadows of your bud petals. Make sure to think of each petal as an individual. Add shadows to the far left region and then think about where there would be possibly an overlap of the petal or even a bend on the petal surface. Any locations where you may encounter these textures would result in a shadow. Also, with the same color watered down, add a slight tint to your highlights and to soften those edges on those shadows. Next, let these colors dry. Personally, I find flower buds a bit easier to determine where my shadows are located, but open flowers are a completely different story. I find these flowers to be the hardest to paint, especially when you are not working from a reference photo. I mean, how do you really break down where the shadow details are supposed to go anyway? It can be a bit overwhelming. For this reason, I've established some ground rules to help me decide where a shadow is supposed to go. First, ask yourself the question, is the petal on the far left of the flower? Chances are it's going to be a shadow if your light source is on the right. Next, is the petal under another petal? If so, then chances are that that petal is going to have a shadow. Then ask yourself, does the petal bend or curve in a particular direction? If so, it's going to cast a shadow away from your light source. Finally, is the petal blooming straight up from the center of the flower? If so, it's going to be casting a shadow at the base of the petal as well as casting a shadow on the petal below it. These are just a few examples of determining whether your petal is casting a shadow or not. 
When you are done, the painting should look something like this. Once you're done, let your painting dry, and I mean completely dry. Back to the buds. Using the peach mixture from earlier, add a bit of yellow and then water it down. Next, with a dry brush, pick up some of that wet paint from your palette and begin swooping upward from the base of the petal towards the tip to create a simple vein texture on your petal. By applying this texture onto your already dried midtones and shadows, you are tinting your paper with a warm hue, giving the appearance of sunlight cascading on your flowers and accenting its warmer colors. Note to self, make sure to keep some of the white on your paper for highlights. This will help make the flower appear more three-dimensional in your illustration. Once again, it should look something like this when you are done. And that's it for this tutorial. We are halfway through, if you can believe it. Just like a flower who has to go from seed to full bloom, there's a lot of obstacles that you might be facing. Don't get too discouraged if you feel like your painting is not quite measuring up to what you first had in mind. Don't worry about it. For some reason, all watercolor has this little ugly stage. Maybe you need to just walk away for a little bit and then come back, but we can always finish up final details and just some tweaking towards the end. So don't fret, and if you are ready to go ahead and start painting the next step, which is bunny fur, go ahead and click now.